check one two is this working i hope it's working because uh i kind of need it all right let's do this guys what's going on good afternoon welcome to hashtag tnt joe fi tech news that jerome ortega finds interesting i am your host uh jerome ortega and uh this is episode something something because i lost count i have no idea what episode this is anymore this is also day uh, something something in quarantine because i also lost count of how many days i've been uh in this bedroom hosting this show <laughs> anyway uh good, good afternoon to people uh all around the us good morning and good evening to everyone else around the world i know we have a lot of people who watch this outside of the us so appreciate you stopping by uh today is kind of a slow news day Yesterday was kind of a slow news day. I'm still dealing with a bit of sinus issue stuff, but I feel better than I did uh, yesterday. So hopefully my ears, like sometimes they'll pop in and out and hopefully we'll go through the whole show today without any popping, but uh, we'll see. I'll let you know when it does because I'll start bitching about it. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's let's get into it. Uh, why 2019 is in here. He beat me to uh, saying hi to everybody. What's going on? Why 2019? Glad you could make it to the stream. Nigel Naughton. So it's 4.99. Yes, it's 4.99. And um, I actually have an article that's going to go over the OnePlus 7 Pro uh, at $500. It makes me wonder what other competition is out there right now that can compete with it, but we'll get into that. Anyway, Nigel, uh, glad you could make the stream. Nice to have you on. Uh, Ronaldo, Rain <laughs> sorry, Ronaldo. <laughs> Ronaldo uh, de Leon. Uh, what's up, Jerome? Not much, Ronaldo. How's it going, man? How you doing? Glad you can make it. Uh, nice to see you in here again, man. Um, uh, Brian is in here as well. Still a deal, just not a steal. There you go. Uh, again, we'll, we'll go over it. Uh, Nigel saying... Uh, F the pixel stuff, as with anything Google, it's all vapor. Uh, and then Grant, uh, what's up, Jerome and phone Jerome fam? Look at look at Grant getting the hashtags down, even <laughs> Grant. What's going on? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Uh, nice to have you guys here. Um, 
I, I see Olaf, Olaf, Olaf uh, Wouters. Am I saying that right, Olaf? Hopefully I am. Watching this from my OnePlus 7 Pro. Great. Uh, the OnePlus 7 Pro has always been on my radar as one of the phones to get. And uh, again, it is kind of a slower news day, so I don't have a ton of news to go over, but uh, maybe this is something that we can like sit and talk about and discuss and uh, have a good conversation about. So um, we'll see. Um, so anyway, Olaf, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, Y 2019, the TCL 11 Pro, whenever it comes, will probably come with the 690. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, considering the fact that TCL 10 Pro is the 675, right? So the TCL 11 Pro just makes sense to have the 690 on it. When that would come out next year, but by next year, would they already have something uh, to be the successor for that? Maybe, maybe not. But at that time, then the 690 would be probably a lot cheaper. So, uh, and then Brian with the dollar super chat right from the beginning, Brian, thank you so much, man, for the support. Thank you for the continued streak of super chats making this, I don't know, 70 something, 80 something in a row. Uh, Brian, thank you, man. Thank you for the extra support. Always means a lot to me. Um, Brian, every day helping me offset uh, costs for running the stream. <laughs> Brian, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, Grant is saying, uh, where's, <laughs> uh, Oh God, I just popped my ear <laughs> saying, see, damn it. All right, hold on. The, the sinus stuff is just like, it It like ruins my day. It makes it hard for me to talk. Uh, and it popped as I was laughing. God damn it. Grant is saying, where's that P40 Pro Plus? Um, yeah, I need to figure out that $1,600 first, Grant. <laughs> I want to get it though. I do want to get it. I, I'm like so behind on like, I just have 8 million projects going on. God, I pop both my ears laughing. Grant, I'm blaming I'm blaming that on you. <laughs> that P40 Pro Plus is coming. It is, maybe. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. Um, let me see here. Uh Nigel is saying 690 has 5G. Yeah. So yesterday they they announced a a new um Snapdragon 690 chipset. And uh, this is going to be a lower end. This is a, the successor to the Snapdragon 650. And this 690 will have 5G with it. I think they said performance-wise, it'll be 20% faster than a 675. I've used the 675 since I have the TCL 10 Pro. It's good. Um, it, it still will hiccup here and there. But I think for most users, it, it's not bad. It isn't bad. Um, let me see here. Hopkins is in here. God, I can't. It's like the sinuses. Oh, I can't. It's bothering me right now. Uh, Hopkins is in here. Uh, Hopkins, uh, nice contribution. Talking to Brian. Hopkins, welcome to the stream. Yes, it is. It's always a, a nice contribution by Brian. He's 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 been very uh, supportive of the channel, and uh, I, I always appreciate it. But Hopkins, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to the chat. Uh, glad you stopped by. Um, why says I wasn't here yesterday, but I'm excited for that 690. Yeah. Again, uh, the only experience I have with that 675 right now is the TCL 10 Pro, but it's not bad by any means. Actually, when I first got it and I started using it, I was surprised how well the Snapdragon 675 worked. So uh, to know that the 690 will probably be a good affordable chipset with a little more performance behind it, like can't beat it, right? Uh, I'll take it and, you know, hopefully it'll be a good, uh, a good successor to the 675. Um, Hilario, uh, Areguin, Areguin. I don't know. I'm, I'm really bad at pronunciations, but, uh, Hilario, uh, welcome to the stream. Jerome with them fresh hats. Yeah. These are like a collection of like, uh, hats from Chicago artists, uh, and they're all bulls related. So I got both of both the best world, Chicago artists and Chicago, uh, Chicago bulls and just Chicago in general. Um, yeah, I like my hats. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, take some steroids for that affliction, bro. You mean my sinuses? Like right now when I'm talking, there's just like this like echo coming out of both of my ears and actually like closing my ears makes it easier to talk. But uh, I, I look pretty stupid doing this and uh, hopefully six isn't here because if six was here, he would clip that and then send it to me and then uh, put a bunch of laughing emojis next to it. So <laughs> anyway, um, 
Yeah, it looks like Brian's driving right now. <laughs> Brian, stay safe, man. Uh, okay, guys, let's let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's crack into these stories. The first story that I have today, though, is uh, we're going to talk about, uh, and this actually came out yesterday. So, this article from Android Authority is talking about how Google uh, launched Android 11 beta, but they've already updated it. And uh, for anyone who has a Pixel 2 and newer, have you received this update for? Uh, your Pixel, if you're running a, a, a Android 11 beta, these sinuses are killing me, man. It's uh, it's it's making it really tough to do this right now. So I'm I'm gonna bear I'm gonna I'm gonna bear with you guys. Bear with it. I will I will barrel through. So uh, yeah, I uh, I ended up downloading Android 11 beta, and uh, right now when I saw this article come out, so this article came out yesterday, and um. Where is it here? So in my settings, I went to check if it was available and, um, oh, I have the bigger, the smaller screen. There you go. So I have the update for it, uh, but it's it's not, you know, Android 11 beta two. This is just Android 11 beta. I guess they're calling it 1.5. I don't think Android is calling it that. This is what they're just saying because a new update came up for it to fix some annoying bugs. So Google just pushed out a minor update to the first Android 11 beta. This is not the second beta. We don't expect that until next month. This new beta fixes some bugs and thankfully brings Google Pay support, which is actually pretty funny because yesterday, if you were here on stream, I was able to update Google Pay and it worked fine. And I didn't update. Obviously, you're looking at it on my phone here. I didn't update uh, my Pixel 4. So I was able to use Google Pay and I got that on there. But it says here, it was only about a week ago that Google launched the first Android 11 beta. However, today Google launched version 1.5 of the beta program. Did they call it 1.5 officially? I don't think they did. Maybe they did. Uh, in order to fix some pretty annoying bugs that have been plaguing testers over the past week. To be clear, this is not the second beta. We don't expect to see that until July 2020. This is simply a quick tweak of the first beta, so people don't use, so people don't need to use a very buggy OS until the genuine second beta lands. What's new in Android 11 beta 1.5, along with bug fixes, the Android 11 beta 1.5 also brings Google Pay support, which is a welcome fix. If you remember when Android 11 beta first came out and I tried to put Google Pay on it, it wouldn't let me, it aired out on me. Again, I was able to update it yesterday without updating to this new whatever update came out. So I don't know if something just changed within that, but whatever, if it's working, it's working. With contactless payments more popular than ever, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic making them all but essential, Google Pay support is pretty much a necessity. Some examples of the fixed bugs in this new version are eSIM failures on the Google Pixel 3 and 3a, strange reboots when using gesture navigation, strange reboots when moving apps from landscape to portrait, Bluetooth pairing slowness. The one issue I've noticed uh, on mine is Telegram. Telegram with Android 11 beta will just automatically uh, shut off or it'll close and then I'll have to reopen it, which is a little annoying. Well, it's a lot annoying, but uh, maybe after I update this, maybe it'll fix that. We'll see. There are likely a lot more fixes, but we haven't had uh, time to delve deep into the Android 11 beta 1.5 yet. Stay tuned for a more thorough list. The easiest way to get the new beta is to wait for the OTA to appear on your phone that's already running the first beta. If you want it faster, we recommend Google's web flashing tool, but you can always manually install the update using the factory images. So yeah, um, again, I'll, I'll update it and I'll see if it's changed anything stability wise. But so far, Android 11 beta on my Pixel 4 has been pretty good. I haven't noticed anything but issues with Telegram on it. Otherwise, it's been running pretty smoothly. Android Stud is in here. Hey, Leo, what's going on, man? Actually, Android Stud, I need to... Actually, I have your uh, phone number. I'll, I'll text you a link to my Discord so you can join the Discord if you want and just join it join the chat because you're, you know, a higher tiered member, uh, for, you know, the YouTube membership, which by the way, thank you. You have, uh, the perk for that discord. So I'll give you that link a little later today. Uh, one plus seven pro get it, bro. <laughs> you're such, you're such a sarcastic ass accidental touches for the win. Uh, <laughs> 
I forgot about that, right? The the one seven the one plus seven pro has curved glass. Is uh is is the curved glass just as deep as like the TCL ten pro? I mean, you have the TCL ten pro, right? Oh, I don't know if you have the one plus seven pro though. Um, I forgot about that. That's actually a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing being so sarcastic. <laughs> uh, Marcus A says, "What's up?" I just had a thought. First of all, Marcus A, welcome to the stream, man. Uh, glad you can make it again. While everyone is wondering what's happening with the Pixel 4a, the Pixel 5 has managed to dodge major leaks. That's true. I mean, do you think that's why they're doing it, though? Or do you think that... Uh, I I don't think that they're doing that just for that, though, right? And, and regardless, I think sooner or later the leaks will come out for that pixel five and uh we'll get to see everything that comes along with it but maybe maybe it's part of the strategy i don't know i still think that you know if i was google i would just go ahead and put that out but uh yeah i don't know um anyway marcus uh welcome to the stream man welcome to the chat appreciate you stopping by big house productions is in here as well hello stream jerome how's it going big house uh nice to see you man nice to see you as always thank you for being such a regular on the show it's always nice to see you just like a lot of you guys it's 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 nice to, to have you back and just joining in and uh joining in the chat i don't have a ton of stories today either so uh it'll be a good way to kind of like converse and see what's going on let me know what's going on with you guys let me know if you have any phone news that you want to talk about. Maybe something I can like break into uh, in between some of the stories or I'll skip a story just to go over it again. I don't have a, I don't have a ton of stuff today, so we'll see. Um, <laughs> Grant said, yes, discord is crickets. It is. My discord is pretty slow, uh, except for my fasting channel that's on there. <laughs> but I'm sure Grant is like, I'm not going to sit here for this fasting stuff. But yes, my phone channel on discord is pretty slow at, the, at this point. Uh, Android stud says, yeah, it's the worst on TCL. <laughs> I know it makes it really hard to use my TCL 10 Pro because of the, the curved glass. It really is. Uh, Javier, uh, Javier, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Nice to see you. I'm going to throw uh, money to the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II instead. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Uh, you are a big fan of that. Um, so did you, you have it on pre-order right now? The Sony Xperia 1 Mark II? You're going to have to let me know when that comes in or when uh, they give you the estimated arrival date and uh, your experience with it. I I wouldn't mind spending money on that phone if the camera is going to be really good, but we'll see. Uh, it's also the same reason that I'm sitting here contemplating getting the Huawei uh, P40 Pro Plus because of the camera, although I won't have any Google services, so I don't know how I'd feel about that. Anyway, uh, though 500 for the OnePlus 7 Pro is a good deal. There you go. Uh, Y2019 says, since the Pixel is going from an 8 series to the 765G or 768G, then the Pixel 5a could get that 690 because it is cheap and 5G. Yeah, but um, but there's no way they're going to... Well, okay, I could see that. So yeah, I see what you're saying. If the if the Pixel 5 is going to go from the 7 or from an 8 series to a 7, then maybe the Pixel 5 would go from uh, or the 5a would go from a lower 7 series to a higher 6 series. That's not that's not a bad call. We'll just see how good the 690 is, but I could see them doing that too. That's actually a really good point. Uh Ramzan uh Ramzan am I saying that right? Ramzan uh, Sahin Sahin uh nice what's nice? I, I don't know what nice is, but uh, <laughs> Ramzan, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Nice to have you on. Uh, that's what I mean by nice. Nice to have you on here, man. Glad you can make it. Grant is saying, if you're short on news, I posted a P40 Pro Plus camera view review article to, to Discord. Thank you, Grant. Actually, I'll have to take a look at that. I haven't uh, checked my Discord in the last day or two. I, I was posting another video on my other channel yesterday, and I just it's been really busy. Um, I will check that out. Actually, thank you for sharing that, especially if I am short on news, uh, but it's already 20 minutes in here and we're already having, I'm, I'm still in the first story after talking about uh, all this other stuff. Uh, Big House is saying, that's why I'd rather have the TCL 10L, no ghost touches. Great point, great point. I would rather have a flat screen than a curved display screen. Yes, it looks nice. And yes, it's a really nice aesthetic, but it isn't uh, as far as, that's the whole form over function thing, right? It might look nice, but uh, at the end of the day, if you're making a bunch of accidental touches, it is very annoying to use. And uh, 
yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I, I feel the same way, have the same sentiments. I would look at art of photography for in-depth of uh, the camera of the Mark II. Uh, thank you, Javier. Actually, I think I've heard of art of photography. Um, it's been a while though. Anyway, uh, Javier, I will look into that. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Uh, what's the scoop with the OnePlus 7 Pro? We're going to get into it. That's story number four. Uh, there's not much scoop. It's just talking about it. 500 bucks right now um, for the OnePlus 7 Pro. Like, is it the best deal out there right now for 2020? I don't know if it's the best deal, but uh, I think for people there, I think there are certain like amount of people who I feel that phone would be good for, but we'll go over that in a bit. Um, why says uh, Jerome, I don't think there is a no way for the pixels. They made that horrid notch. So anything is on the table. Yeah. <laughs> at this point who like anything Google does at this point is uh, anybody's guess. I have no idea. Um, what Google has up their sleeve, what their marketing, uh, you know, strategy is. I really, I think, I think for everybody, it's, it's just anybody's guess. Levin Williams with a $5 super chat. Levin, thank you, man. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Uh, wow. You're getting very, very regular with these super chats. Levin, thank you for the support. Thank you so much, man. Hello, Shroom. I made it late. I wish, uh, the Sony phone was cheaper. Yeah. Uh, well, you were here, Levin, right? I said 1200 so you could get the Sony uh, Xperia 1 Mark II for 1200 bucks, but it comes with a free pair of those uh, $200 earbuds. So essentially it makes that Sony phone a thousand bucks, which is still expensive. And you could always just like, you know, sell those, uh, what are they called? The WMX 1003, I don't know what the name is. I always forget. But um, I mean, I wish it was cheaper too. I just... You know, Sony, Sony, Sony usually puts those prices a bit higher than most other competitors. But Levin Williams, uh, thank you for the uh, thank you for joining the stream. Thank you for the five dollar super chat. Thank you for the support. Always uh, really appreciate it, man. Uh, like I was saying earlier to Brian, uh, you guys uh, help me do this daily. You guys help me offset costs. Same for all the members in here as well. So, guys, thank you so much. Levin, thank you again for that support, man. All right. Let's move on to our next story because I'm only on uh, story number two. And we're going to switch over to Apple. And uh, this article from TechCrunch is talking about what to expect from Apple's WWDC 2020. Uh, so this is a kind of a longish story. I'm, I don't think I'm going to go through the entirety of it just because I didn't realize all this time already passed by. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of just like sift through it and see what the big points are. Uh, okay, so first and foremost, this is going to be a weird one, mostly because it's 2020 and everything is just weird now and blah, blah, blah. So Microsoft's build was something of a mixed bag as the bellwether for company hosted online only developer conferences. Google notably skipped IO together, blah, blah, blah. Celebrity video cameos have become kind of a staple for Apple events in recent years, so it seems likely to expect that they'll remain uh, here. For anyone who doesn't know, WWDC does this weekly. I have another two dollars super chat from Levin. Seven to eight hundred dollars would uh, would have been on point. Yeah, at seven to eight hundred dollars, especially with a really good camera on it, uh, I'm sure it would have made waves. I mean, at least this is going to be available worldwide. I think. You can just buy it unlocked and you can use it anywhere around the world or at least in terms of GSM. Um, it's not going to have 5G though, which is also even another good point to push for a lower price. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. At that price point, I think it would have been uh, a really good deal. But Levin, thank you again for uh, another $2 super chat. I will make sure to update um, the intro and outro because I think you're higher on the leaderboard or whatever. <laughs> for for um not only june super chatters but just overall so levin thank you so much man thank you for that support okay guys let's uh let's move on here so um between staffers and developers these sorts of things are designed to be an annual bit of cheerleading things will feel strange without an audience i so i don't really care about whether or not there's an audience whether or not like I just, if you're going to have a developer conference, if you're going to talk about the important things, I don't need people cheering. I don't need celebrities in it. I don't need musical artists making a whole like song and dance about the whole thing. Just show us what the developer conference is about. If there's new hardware to show us, show us. I don't, I don't need somebody. I don't need a celebrity telling me that I need to like be behind this product or be behind the service. Just show us what, what, 
you guys have been working on for the past year so we can incorporate that into uh, like our daily lives when it comes to technology or to show us the forward push of what's coming for the future. Um, the opening of Apple's event is even more tailored to consumers and Microsoft's before venturing into the weeds. The company uses Tim Cook's keynote as one of a handful of key platforms for announcing new products. Blah, 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 blah. I'm a hardware guy, so I'm going to start here. The biggest rumor leading up to the event so far is the long rumored shift to its own in-house ARM processors, making a shift away from a decade plus dependence on Intel chips. The move to a Mac ARM, not to be confused with Mud Honey frontman Mark Arm, <laughs> okay, <laughs> would mark another key move towards silicon independence for the company, which has made great strides on that front over on the mobile side. Um, so notably, the actual arrival of such ARM-based Macs isn't likely to happen until next year. Rather, the intent here is to outline the roadmap in order to give developers in attendance a chance to begin tailoring software for their imminent arrival. Other rumored hardware includes a redesigned version of Apple's popular all-in-one desktop. An update is certainly long overdue on this front. The iMac's design language has been largely unchanged since 2012, uh, and then they're just talking about the desktop, what's to be in it. Other feasible hardware rumors include the arrival of Apple's tile style hardware tracker AirTags. That's one reported, uh, reportedly been in the works for a while, though things have been uh, heating up lately. Courtesy of leaks and tiles complaints to the EU about alleged anti-competitive action from Apple. So if you're not aware of what tile is, you know, or yeah, uh, I have one in my wallet. It's just like this little uh, piece of hardware, real thin. You can put it in a wallet or in your bag or whatever. So if you lose it or you need to figure out where it is, you can kind of uh, have that tile in there to like beep or you can track it through your phone. Um, and it looks like Apple might be coming out with one. So uh, in addition, it says here, another rumor that's been bubbling up quite a bit, uh, AirPods Studio. Apple will reportedly launch over-ear competitors to its own successful Beats brand. High-end noise cancellation premium sound is on the docket, along with modular magnetic components. Also potentially on the list are refreshes to a couple of iPads, as uh, well as a long-awaited update to the HomePod or possibly the addition of a smaller, cheaper version of the smart speaker. Out of all of these things, the one that I'm looking for the most are uh, higher-end headphones. I'm pretty happy with uh, the AirPods Pro that I have, I was gonna show them here, but I don't have them at the moment. Um, and uh, I, I lately, I really like the design of some of Apple's other stuff. And if they actually make a good over the ear uh, set of headphones, like wireless ones, maybe that I could use, I would definitely look into it, especially, well, I would use it more if I was riding the train and public transportation more, but since everything is on lockdown right now, I'm staying away from public transit. It was my only way of getting around, but I was also living in the city and I am not at this point because I'm just trying to ride all of this weirdness out. So whenever that rides out, then I will figure out what my next move is. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of what uh, is apparently happening on the hardware side of it. And then as far as software, iOS 14, iPad OS 14, uh, and then this is going to be uh, coming up on June 22nd at 10 a.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. I don't know. Maybe this is uh, maybe this is something that I would eventually like try to stream uh, or do like a stream reaction kind of thing, like watch it with you guys live and then give you my thoughts. But I don't know. I don't know how many people would want to watch that. I feel like some of you guys would rather just watch the stream not have me comment on it. So uh, Levin is saying here, 5G is overrated at this point. Yes, it is. Uh, again, and yeah, so so you're probably uh, on that point still with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. But um, yeah, I would have figured though, like it's like, man, if you're going to price that at 1200 bucks uh, to not have 5G on it, this seven to $800 price point that you were pointing out uh, makes it even uh, a better deal. The OnePlus keynote for the OnePlus 8 was pretty good in my honest opinion. You know, I actually never saw that one. Uh, was that one kind of like fan filled event? Did it have like, you know, celebrities or uh, musical guests? I mean, so here's the thing is like, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. You know, I can sit here and be like, I don't care about it. I don't, and I don't in a lot of respects, but if they want to make it entertaining and not cringy, then I'm, I can understand that. I think there's a fine line between having an event like this and also making sure 
doesn't kind of make you cringe at like, why did they do that? Because uh, it seems like, and usually Apple is better about it than a lot of like other companies that do it. But uh, but I see what you mean. I see what you mean. That makes sense. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> no fans and no celebs. Oh, that's right. That OnePlus keynote. Yeah. No, I remember that one. I watched that one. No, that was really good. I. I talked about that. And actually that's what I liked. It was very just straightforward about what it had. It didn't have like a bunch of like extra like things that were unnecessary for that live stream. But I feel you. Okay, so let's break into the OnePlus 7 Pro. This article from Android Central is a 12 month uh, review about it after. So I know somebody was in here. I don't know if they're still in here and they said they were watching it. Uh, they were watching this stream on their one plus seven pro, but I, I kind of wanted to chime in to other people or get other people's thoughts who have the one plus seven pro who have had it for about a year and what their thoughts of it are, or even if you haven't had it for a year, even if you've had it just for a couple of months or you just got it, I'd love to know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can watch all the reviews in the world, but sometimes it's, it's just nice to hear from people who who don't do it for a living and who actually just like, Hey, this is the phone I've been using every day. And yes, it's been good or it's okay, but it has some issues and it's always nice to just hear feedback from other people. So the one plus seven pro is now selling for just four 99, making it a standout option a year after its launch. And the one thing that I kind of want to point out here too, is the fact that getting a phone like the one plus seven pro a year later, there's nothing wrong with that. I think, as tech geeks, tech fans, tech enthusiasts, whatever you want to call it, we're always striving for the latest and greatest. And while there's nothing wrong with that, I think people who are on the forefront of that, sometimes we pay way too much at the beginning when deals can be had like this, because you know that there are going to be some people who don't need that latest and greatest today. And I think that's also something to point out when you are the tech lead in your group of friends or your family is you can't always push the most expensive or the newest thing because I feel like a good majority of people aren't always looking for that latest and greatest. They want to get a good deal. They want something that's going to last a while and they don't need all the bells and whistles and something like this at a $500 price point might be a really good option for some people. But then there was like Leo who was in here earlier that uh, pointed out to me the fact that, Hey, uh, go ahead and buy it, Jerome. Good luck to you with those accidental touches. <laughs> so, which is something I totally forgot that the one plus seven pro had, but let's read into this article and see how they feel about it. So one plus phones age very well and uh, they do. And also one thing to point out here too is their resale value. I think we've had people point out in the past in chat as well that the resale value on OnePlus phones are probably higher than any other smartphones when it comes to Android. Google might be up there as well, but it probably isn't as good as OnePlus, I think. And then obviously Apple has the best resale, I think, out of all the handsets that are out there today. Uh, the device debuted over a year ago with the Snap 855, an all-screen design with a retractable motor for the front camera, Quad HD Plus display with 90 hertz refresh rate, 48 megapixel primary camera, and all-day battery life. A year down the line, the phone is still going strong. The design has held up incredibly well in 2020. The hardware is still robust. And with the phone now selling for $499, you're getting incredible value here. I've been using the OnePlus 8 Pro for the last two weeks, and I switched to the OnePlus 7 Pro for a few days to see just what you miss out on when compared to the OnePlus's 2020 flagship. And what I found is that there really isn't a whole lot different between the two devices. Sure, the OnePlus 8 offers 5G connectivity and has wireless charging and an IP68 rating, but it starts off at $900, a full $400 more than what the OnePlus 7 Pro is retailing for right now. Here's the thing too is, so to, to kind of add on to what I was talking about earlier, everybody has different needs. So, in this article, they're pointing out 5G connectivity and they're pointing out uh, IP and IP68 rating and wireless charging. Somebody like me, 
I don't use, I have, I have a good amount of phones that use wireless charging and I don't use wireless charging. I still charge all my phones wired. IP68, yes, that's great, but I would rather sacrifice having an IP rating for a cheaper price because I cannot remember the last time my phone ever fell into water, ever got into a situation where water was an issue. And I'm not saying that I don't, you know, I'm not saying that it won't happen. I'm saying, I'm not saying that I don't want a phone that has an IP68 rating or an IP rating, but I would rather pay, I would have rather paid $700 for a OnePlus 8 Pro if it didn't have an IP68 rating or wireless charging for me. So again, people's priorities might be different and at least here, the OnePlus 7 Pro for $500 can kind of stand on its own two feet because, you know, it sacrifices some of these other features that might not be important to other people. And for them, it's like for 500 bucks, sure, I'll pay that price. I don't use wireless charging anyway. It's not something that I use. And I am not swimming in my phone every day, or you guys know what I'm talking about. You just, you kind of have to look and see what's important, you know, what priorities are for other people. So. Here's why you should consider buying the OnePlus 7 Pro if you're looking to save some cash in 2020. Um, I'm not gonna, well, okay. Bottom line, the OnePlus 7 Pro continues to be a fantastic choice a year after its launch. The all screen design without a camera cutout makes it stand out in 2020. And the Snap 855 chipset is just as fast in day-to-day -day use. The 90 Hertz display coupled with clean software is a delight to use. And with the phone now selling for 499, you're getting incredible value. So the Pro's an all-screen AMOLED display, a 90 hertz refresh rate, powerful hardware that still holds up, clean software with no bloatware and regular updates, decent cameras. The cons, it doesn't have IP, it doesn't have an IP rating and it doesn't have wireless charging. Again, those are two things for me that isn't so much a con just because it's not something that I noticed in the first place. I can say that with a lot of my phones, I don't really I don't really think about wireless charging because I don't use it. I don't really think about IP ratings because I'm pretty careful with my phones and I'm pretty like aware of keeping them away from water. Again, it doesn't mean that I don't wanna have it, but it's not something that I notice. So I'm surprised though that for a con, they're not talking about the all screen display uh, or having a curved display is what I mean. And they're not talking about that as a con for accidental touches. So I, I wanna see how they feel about it because I've never used a OnePlus 7 Pro. Leo was in here, Android Stud was in here earlier talking about accidental touches on that OnePlus 7 Pro, which is also why I wanna get um, people's opinions on that. So I have a better idea if how bad that actually is on a phone like this. Okay. Um, and actually, here, here's the thing too. There's no cutout on this phone, right? Because it has a selfie uh, pop-up camera. So it's it's one of the things that I love about having uh, on a phone. I've never had a phone with a pop-up camera. I want one just to have one, but I would also want one because uh, I don't have to worry about a notch or anything like that or a punch hole or water drop, teardrop, raindrop. What else do they call it? Anyway, so the standout design feature on the OnePlus 7 Pro is the retractable module that houses the front camera. Going this route allowed OnePlus to get rid of the camera cutout, providing an all-screen front. That design looks particularly great in 2020. It does, uh, considering all brands have once again switched back to the dreaded notch. The OnePlus 8 Pro has a hole punch cutout located on the left. What that means is that the OnePlus 7 Pro and the 7T Pro are the only two phones from the manufacturer to support an all screen design without any camera cutout. A combination of 5G connectivity and IP68 rating have necessitated the removal of the retractable module on the OnePlus 8 Pro and other 2020 phones. Actually, here's a, here's a question for you. Would you, okay, I, and I, I'm only bringing this up because I just read the sentence. Would you rather have a phone? Hmm. Would you rather have a phone that has Let's say all the other specs were the same. Let's say the phone had a Snapdragon 865 and let's say the phone had 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs internal storage. Let's say both phones had that, but one phone didn't have 5G and that same phone also did not have an IP68 rating on it. 
but it had a it had an all screen design with a selfie pop up camera, right? The other phone has 5G on it. It has an IP68 rating, but it has a punch hole notch or punch hole design on it. Which one would you rather have? What's more important to you, an all screen or 5G and an IP68 rating? I'm asking this question because I I'm curious what your prioritization is at. Otherwise, everything's the same. Performance is the same. Onboard storage. Um, the cameras are the same. Everything else is the same. Which one would you rather have? This is actually a really good question because I wonder what people prioritize. Like, is 5G that important to you? Is an IP rating that important to you? Or is an all screen display more important? And would you rather have a selfie pop up camera? Why? I'm sure people have done polls on this to see how they feel. Anyway, I will, uh, I'll continue on. That's actually, yeah, uh, that's something that's a, that's a good thing to point out maybe in the future, because, uh, again, that's, that's a good way of showing what people's priorities are. So, um, so if you don't want a phone with an ungainly notch, the OnePlus 7 Pro is a great choice. The design of the OnePlus 7 Pro itself is very similar to the OnePlus 8 Pro. The phone has symmetric curves on either side and identical curves at the back with the glass and metal sandwich design looking just as premium in 2020. Most flagships this year have a similar design aesthetic. So the OnePlus 7 Pro fits right in. I also like the deep blue hue on the Nebula blue color option and the frosted glass finish makes it easier to hold the phone. So these guys are not complaining at all about the, the display and uh, accidental touches. Is it not a thing? Or am I crazy here? Or are they completely omitting it and not talking about it for a reason? Or did I just not read it yet? Because I'm trying to find it here and I don't see anybody talking about uh, having that as an issue on the display. All this article is saying is has it has vibrant colors, excellent contrast levels, uh, you can customize the color balance. They're talking about the refresh rate. Um, yeah, there's nothing about accidental touches. So I'm curious if anybody in chat has uh, issues with that. Actually, let me check really quick just to see. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. So let me see here. Uh, and I'm I'm now just stuck in chat. So let me go over this really quick. Uh, I see Selwonk is in here. Selwonk, what's going on, man? Doesn't Samsung have a better resale than OnePlus? Oh, shit. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they do because I think about how quickly Samsung drops the prices of their phones right away. So, I mean, maybe maybe they do. I don't know. I think OnePlus has a better resale value, though, than Samsung. I could be wrong. That's a good point. I didn't think about that, though. Anyway, Selwonk, uh, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. So, uh, oh, Levin says it. I have the OnePlus 7 Pro, and so far, it's been great for me. It's still fast and smooth. Can't wait to get Android 11 on it. Um, okay, so Levin is saying, with a case on my OnePlus 7 Pro, I don't get the ghost touches. So, yeah, maybe a case uh, alleviates that problem. I wonder how how it is, though, when you don't have a case. Like someone like me who doesn't use a case, um, I'm wondering how bad that would be. Huh. Big House says, I've had it for over a year, just over a year. Great device. Love the build. Pop-up camera, 90 hertz refresh rate, huge storage, 256 and 8 gigs of RAM on my version. Um, great. Thank you for sharing that, Big House. Uh, I paid 500 for my OnePlus 7 Pro a year ago at a local resale shop. I traded a Note 8 and $100 for it. That's a good deal, man. That's an awesome deal. Uh, Grant says, I don't think quote, decent cameras are a pro. Wait, what did I, did I, I, I don't know if I worded something wrong here. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, emo teardrop. Um, Grant says, I personally don't experience accidental touches on curved displays. I like the look and I'm probably in the minority on that. I mean, I like the look too. I think the look is good on it. I just, yeah, unless you're saying um, you're, uh, you're the minority on accidental touches because on my TCL 10 Pro, that is like, I just, I, I start to lose my shit <laughs> when I, uh, when I accidentally touch something or try to use it one handed and I'm, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me see here. So Wong says, weren't you thinking of getting the Xiaomi Mi 9T with the pop-up camera? I was, I was. And then, and then the, the Huawei, uh, the Huawei P40 pro plus or whatever came up and I was like, well, I can't buy all those phones and 
I've just been behind in general because I still have the TCL 10 Pro that I have camera reviews to do for and the Galaxy A71. And I just, I have another channel and I have like these new clients I'm doing freelance work for and um, life is very busy lately. So I'm just trying to like do everything and try not to lose my mind at the same time. Uh, let me let me scroll back down here. Marcus says, uh, what's that support? What's that software support looking like? Um, what do we... Marcus, I'm sorry. I, I just lose track and I can't, I don't know if we're, I, I don't even know if you were talking to me. You might be talking to somebody else. So I'm sorry. Uh, Hopkins says pop up uh, all screen for me. Yep. That's how I feel. Uh, Big House says the blue bold and one has a pop-up camera two work pretty good. I love how Big House has all these other phones and I forgot about blue even being a brand. Um, but yeah, I, I don't even know that phone at all. The bold N1, I have no idea. Uh, Crosswhite 17, Crosswhite 17, um, welcome to the stream, man. Nice to have you. I wouldn't want the pop-up camera. So you prefer a notch or a punch hole um, over a pop-up camera. Is there a reason for that? Is it just because I'm just wondering why someone wouldn't want an all-screen display? Or is it because you think, I mean, I, I think there's probably a minority or a group of people that also think a pop-up camera might be cheesy. Like they might think it's gimmicky, but I don't know. I think I, I, I feel like I would like that feature and I would rather have an all screen display, but um, yeah, again, that's again, that's people prioritize things differently. So yeah, even big house says I'm good with the punch hole camera. So there you go. Um, Hopkins says in the EU one plus store, the same cost $671. This is not fair. <laughs> Sorry, Hopkins. Uh, RCI, I, R R S I L I N N Y C. <laughs> What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice to have you. What's up, Jerome? I personally don't care about 5G, but I don't want to deal with a pop-up camera that doesn't work one day. That's also a fair point. And actually, for Crosswhite that was saying that earlier, maybe that's why uh, he brings that point up too, because eventually that pop-up thing might uh, stop working. And actually, also to add on to that, you know another thing that... Uh, goes in my head when I think about a pop-up camera are flip up lights. Do you guys, well, I, it just depends on the audience here, but do you remember flip up lights on cars, flip up headlights, pop up headlights, same thing. They would be headlights that would literally, I'm trying to pop up and then they would fold back down when you, you know, turned your lights off. Uh, that was really popular. I think in the late eighties and even some cars in the early nineties and uh it was i it was cool back then i think and then uh later on in the late 90s early 2000s it would always be funny to see cars where those pop up those pop up headlights sometimes only one light would pop up and the other one wouldn't uh or i knew people who had those cars and they wouldn't pop up at all or they would just stay stuck and you would just have to leave them popped up all the time. But uh, but yeah, that's that's true too. They're moving parts and that can be an issue down the road. So I totally get that. Uh, Chris T, Chris T, welcome to the stream, man. One plus Z. Yeah, a lot of us have been talking about this one plus Z. A lot of us have been waiting for it. I'm excited to see the specs. I don't really know everything that's going to come out with it, but uh, hopefully it'll be the the Snap 765G, hopefully 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, hopefully a clean UI. And uh, the really big rumor or the really big thing that we're waiting for is uh, hopefully it'll be under 400 bucks in the US. If that's the case, I think a lot of us will be on board for that phone. But uh, Chris... Chris T, welcome to the stream. Uh, welcome to the chat. Nice to see you, man. Nice to have you on here. Uh, Nigel uh, Sugden, uh, do I, am I saying that right? Is it Sugden? Sugden? I think it's Sugden, right? I don't know. Let me know, Nigel. Uh, what's up, Jerome? I had the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G here in the UK. Um, wait, they made a 5G version of the OnePlus 7 Pro? Am I going crazy right now? Is that a thing? Um Anyway, uh, so you had it. Did you get rid of it for some reason? Or do you, did you mean the OnePlus 8 Pro? I, I don't think they made a 7 Pro in 5G. I I could be wrong. I don't, let me know. But anyway, Nigel, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Um, Crosswhite 17, there you go. Moving parts tend to break more often. And yes, that's uh, that's an absolutely fair point. Um, Big House, uh, oh, you guys are just talking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If Big House says I have like twenty devices, drum. I know, Big House. I every time, every time I talk about phones and I talk about maybe some like 
outlier phone that really no one's talking about. Big House is like, well, I have this one or I have this particular brand. I'm like, God damn, Big House with all these phones. Uh, but but it's always nice to get someone's viewpoint on that. So uh, the last thing I need is to give cops another reason to pull me over with headlights that don't pop up. <laughs> Fair enough point. Fair enough point. Yeah. Uh, I used to, uh, I used to get pulled over for having a clear, uh, and this was back in like my, uh, when I was like 17, 18, I used to get pulled over for having clear, uh, license plate covers. I don't know. It was like when I was trying to like fix up my car back in the day, I'm like, yeah, a clear license plate cover would be cool. I don't really know what he needs a clear license plate cover or a smoke cover one or anyway. Yeah, no, you're right. The last thing you want is to get pulled over for, but I mean, we're talking about phones here too, but yes, on pop-up lights on a, on a car that makes, <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, there we go. Brian was saying the McLaren was 5g. I forgot about that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for pointing that out. That's right. That's right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's continue on with this article here. In day-to-day -day use, I didn't notice any difference between the OnePlus 7 Pro and the 8 Pro apps launched just as fast on the phone. Gaming was just as enjoyable, and you get the same great stereo speakers and haptic feedback. From a hardware point of view, the OnePlus 7 Pro is just as great as it was when it debuted a year ago. And those are really strong, bold words to say, especially when you're comparing it to the OnePlus 8 Pro. The one thing that I'm wondering here is he's saying that the haptic feedback was the same. Didn't they upgrade the haptic feedback for the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro? Or am I wrong? Or is the OnePlus 7 Pro when they updated haptic feedback on that? Because I have the OnePlus 6T and the haptic feedback isn't the best. I mean, it's, it's fine, but I think as far as haptic feedback, nothing beats my 11 Pro. My, 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 uh, iPhone 11 pro. So, okay. Um, the, the real world performance is just as reliable a year down the line. And that speaks volumes to the optimizations undertaken by one plus here. The one plus seven pro should continue to deliver in this regard for at least two to three years. And if you're not sold on 5g just yet, it makes a lot of sense to pick up the phone. So uh, decent cameras for the asking price. And I, I, this is where I figured this would be, uh, the biggest difference from uh, the OnePlus 7 Pro and at least the 8 Pro is uh, are the cameras. So the OnePlus 7 Pro comes with a 48 megapixel primary, uh, an 8 megapixel zoom, and a 16 megapixel wide angle lens. While the camera wasn't great to begin with, consistent updates following the launch of the phone have fixed a lot of the issues. That said, the phone loses out against the OnePlus 8 Pro in all lighting conditions. Here are a few photos to illustrate my point. So the 7 Pro on the left, the 8 Pro on the right. And yes, obviously, you look at both of these pictures and the 8 Pro here just looks a lot clearer. The colors are a lot like vi a lot more vibrant and richer and just the details, just everything just looks more in focus uh, with that. The same goes here. This kind of just has a cloudy cast between both of these pictures and here as well, even worse so here. Uh, wow. Yeah, these are huge differences. I wish... When I see camera comparison stuff, I get really jealous because I'm like, I want to do these. Um, but uh, but anyway, photos taken with the 7 Pro are overexposed and it leads to colors looking washed out and a loss of detail. By contrast, photos from the OnePlus 8 Pro look vibrant and detailed. Now you can fix some of these problems by switching to Gcam. There's a good point too. But know that the device itself isn't as good as OnePlus's 2020 flagship. He should have took pictures with a Gcam and compare that too because I would have loved to see because then he could have driven the point that, you know, a OnePlus 7 Pro still has decent cameras at the price versus a, an 8 Pro. That said, considering what the OnePlus 7 Pro costs now, you are getting a decent set of cameras for the asking price. The phone isn't quite on the same level as the Pixel 3a series, and that's okay. The 7 Pro debuted with Android 9 Pi out of the box. We can talk about uh, the UI. But we all know that OnePlus has great UI. Uh, they're really... When it comes to their their side of the software, it is very clean and optimized and it, it works really efficient and it's very reminiscent of stock Android and it's something that I rarely complain about. So I'm not really gonna get into that. I think we, at least most of us here uh, know that. So the base variant of the 7 Pro with six gigs of RAM is available for $499 and you'll see, I went to the site to check it myself. Uh, so this is out of stock right now, the gray, but you can get the almond right here um, oh, well, no, that's eight gigs of RAM. Oh, these are both eight. 
So the the six gigs is already out of uh, stock. So okay, so maybe you can't get that for four ninety nine right now. Maybe it'll come back in stock. But if you want the eight gig version with two hundred and fifty six gigs of storage, it's five forty nine. Uh, you can get the blue one as well. And uh, they also have one with 12 gigs uh, and with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for 5.99. Um, wasn't the 4.99 that I began this article with, but for 5.49 you'll get double the storage at least. So um, that's why the OnePlus 7 Pro is such a great bargain in 2020. The internal hardware will be more than adequate for several years. Um, yeah, the Snapdragon uh, 845 powered OnePlus 6 holds up fine in 2020. I will say that on the OnePlus 6T I have, the everything still seems really good with it. I have been able to use that fine without really any hiccups. And I think even if I were still to use that as my daily, it would be pretty good except for the camera. Otherwise, I, I think it's still a pretty decent phone. Um, the design is just as premium as the latest flagships money can buy, and you get clean software without any bloatware and the promise of quick updates. Uh, so hmm. the 7 Pro has the same foundation as the OnePlus 8 Pro, fantastic uh, Quad HD Plus display, robust internals, and evocative design that will hold up for several years, and clean software with quick updates if you don't need 5G or wireless charging. The 7 Pro is a fantastic option in 2020. Just the fact that the phone is available for purchase after 12 months is a big deal. OnePlus generally sells phones for just six months, and then they make way for the latest and greatest. So if you're looking to spend 500 bucks on a phone in 2020, get the OnePlus 7 Pro while it's still for sale. Okay. That's it. That's uh, that's my little article for uh, the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's uh, I, again, I think you have to think about prioritizations for people and what people prefer, and then uh, that's a good way to kind of like figure out what someone's looking for. I think at this point, there are two different groups. I feel there's one group that wants a phone that just has an awesome camera on it that they can use for just about any situation. And then I feel like there's always that other crowd that doesn't, it's weird. I feel like there's always that other crowd that doesn't really care much about the camera, but they want something that has like awesome battery life. I think those are the two things I hear about the most, camera and battery. I feel like those are the two big ones. They want a really good camera, a really good battery, one or the other, or sometimes both. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking about people in general. They all want those things. So I don't know. Okay. Um, let me see here. Uh, okay. So yeah, Nigel's saying they had a OnePlus 7 Pro 5G on the EE network here in the UK. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brian's saying the same thing. 549 isn't quite as good of a deal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage is nice. But at 549, I think that opens up your options of what other phones are available. So that makes a lot of sense. Team Varai, a bit late to the party. Hi, everyone. Hey, Team Varai. How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice to have you. Uh, it's all good, man. You can catch the replay if you like uh, whenever that gets posted, which, by the way, uh, since we're in between stories here uh, and, and we're also rounding out the hour. But real quick, uh, I... I have uh, just FYI for you guys, I am considering uh, multi-streaming. I think either later today when I get the time, I'm going to try to multi-stream my streams now on Facebook as well. Uh, the last, I think the last four streams, um, Google YouTube is doing a great job demonetizing all of my stuff. I haven't had a stream uh, become monetized i think now in a week or if you look at like the last three weeks of all my streams i think three of all in the last out of out of the 15 streams i think three of them right now are monetized everything else is demonetized and so at this point i'm just like okay well whatever i can't i can't put all my eggs in one basket especially when it comes to this kind of stuff which is also again why like for you guys to be youtube members or patron members or um Donating in the super chat, it's it's really helpful. And it just, again, it helps really offset costs. So I appreciate that. So thank you guys. But I am starting to look into streaming into other services as well. I might give like Facebook just a shot just to maybe gain an audience there. But uh, maybe Twitch, um, I don't know. Maybe I'll look into Instagram. I, I haven't really figured that out yet. But uh, yeah, just a segue there. And then um, 
and whatever changes happen, I'll let you know. If anything, I'll just multi-stream to different platforms. But uh, really quick before I move on, I forgot to point this out as well, even though we're rounding this out. Uh, for anyone who's watching, if you guys haven't had a chance, please feel free to like the stream. Liking the stream helps me in an algorithmic kind of way, aka I think it helps people uh, find the stream. Um, and if you guys are lurking in chat, feel free to say hello. It's always nice to say hi to, to somebody new here and uh, have a conversation with the community. I think the community, uh, they're a pretty good uh, bunch of people. And uh, we just we like to nerd out and talk about whatever's going on, especially when it comes to the tech world. And uh, real quick, if you guys are in the stream and you're you know wondering why some people have green in their names or why they have a red Chicago star next to their name, that is because they are a member of the Phone Jerome fam. And you can be one too for as little as 99 cents a month. All you got to do is click the join button right here. Uh, that join button will give you uh, access to become a uh, part of the Phone Jerome fam. You'll get the green in your name. You'll get the red Chicago star. You get to use custom emoji and uh, all for as little as 99 cents a month. There are different tiers as well, though, that'll give you access to like my private discord. But like Grant said earlier, it isn't the, the most... Uh, um, chattable at the moment just because there's not much action going on in there except in the fasting channel but that's a different story anyway uh as part of the membership yeah just click the uh blue join button and if you can't find it you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone jerome forward slash join and uh that's it as far as marketing i just thought i'd share that because you know, if you want to support in a different way, um, all of that is appreciated. So thank you guys again, just being in here and liking and subscribing and even just joining the chat and having a conversation is always, um, just nice to have, and it's always nice to have a community. So I do appreciate it. Okay, guys, I will move on. Um, I know we're rounding this out and like, I can't hear out of my right ear and I'm kind of losing my mind. I've been trying to avoid it, but it's just, <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to go through all these. I might save some of these for tomorrow. Um, so, hmm. okay. This article from Android authority is talking about game club for Android, uh, game club for Android launches over 100 games for four 99 a month. I don't know if any of you guys use these services. I think this is something that's similar to Apple arcade. I don't use that either. I am not much of a gamer. The only game I play on my phone right now is Scrabble. And uh, that's really hard to play because Scrabble Go is like, it's just full of like bullshit colors and just like animations. And it, it kind of like ruins the game. And I, there's a bunch of like in-game uh, pay, to, pay to win kind of like shit on it. And I hate that. I think the, the thing that I hate the most out of gaming stuff is pay to win stuff. And it just, yeah, it doesn't really sit well with me. But there is this monthly service called Game Club for Android in case any of you guys were curious or you know wanted to get it uh so it's available today for 4.99 a month a free trial is available to play over 100 games and it's designed to bring back games that are no longer updated some of the best mobile games of all time are available as part of the game club subscription service the app is officially available on android now it comes packed with more than 100 games which is a pretty solid value i have no idea if it really is a solid value I know nothing really about gaming. I I played like some rinky dinky games back then, but I don't I don't really touch gaming at this point anymore, except on my PC. It's the only thing I really play games for. But it says here, the mobile gaming landscape is continually evolving and the new trend seems to be subscription services offering large quantities of games for one monthly cost. Android has Google Pay, Play Pass and Apple has Apple Arcade. Outside of the two official subscri subscription services is Game Club. Okay, so it's, it's a little different. I didn't even know about Google <laughs> Play Pass. That's how much I know about gaming. I don't, I don't do any of this stuff. Also, excuse me, I just, my sinuses are like, they're awful right now. And it's actually gotten worse as we've been like doing this whole hour of chat. Uh, Game Club is a subscription designed to bring back some of the best mobile games in need of a resurrection. The service takes unplayable games that were released over the last 10 years, works with the original developers and makes them playable playable again. Well, that's kind of nice. Actually, that's not bad. It makes me wonder what, what kind of games are underneath that. It first launched on iOS in October of last year. Okay, so iOS has it too. And after many requests, it's finally available on Android for the same $4.99 subscription fee. iOS users can access the games on both 
platforms for one subscription, which is a tremendous value proposition when compared to the other subscription services on mobile. When putting Game Club head to head with Apple Arcade and Google Play Pass, all three services cost $4.99 each, so Game Club fails, uh, falls right in the sweet spot. It has just over 100 games available. Google Play promises hundreds of games, and Apple Arcade is similar to Game Club in terms of quantity, featuring over 100 games on its service. Like Google and Apple's offering, the games on Game Club don't have ads, in-app purchases, or any extras to which on which to spend money. That's good to know. So games like The Heist, Gravity Hook, uh, Toki to Tori, Frozen Synapse, and Spider 2 are just some of the gems included with the $4.99 a month subscription. In terms of overall value, Game Club on Android and iOS is right on par with Apple and Google's offering. Bringing back for getting gems is a great mission, and it's an excellent way to preserve games that would otherwise be lost to history. Pretty cool, especially for like a gaming community, for people who like a variety of games. My cousin is like, my cousin uses a one plus uh, six. He has a one plus six and uh, he, he's not much of a camera guy and he's always more of a battery guy because he plays a ton of games. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he uses this. So um, anyway, here, uh, let me see. So uh, tectonic. Yes, it's me. <laughs> Yes, it is you, Tectonic. How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice to have you on here. Team Bry says, might pass on this one. I'm swamped with Steam, Nintendo, and Stadia as it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have a lot going on, Team Bry. I wouldn't worry too much about this. And pay to win absolutely blows. It does. It is, uh, it's, I can't, I, even though I talk about playing Scrabble Go, I, I can't even, there's a, on Scrabble Go, because people were complaining so much about a lot of this pay to win stuff, they added something called Scrabble Classic to kind of alleviate that, which is nice. But even with Scrabble Classic, and I know I'm, I might be talking to people who don't understand what I'm saying here. Let's say you're winning in Scrabble Classic, uh, which is Scrabble Classic is just the basic game of Scrabble, except no pay to win. But I've noticed that like, let's say, cause I'm fairly good at that game. When I'm playing that game against like random people and up and I'm up by like 30 or 40 points, what ends up happening is I start getting shitty letters and I don't think it's a coincidence. It just seems like all of a sudden all my letters are all like the letter O and then four R's and then another O and it's just, I'm like, okay, that's not a coincidence at this point. I'm just getting a bunch of one point anyway. I just don't think the whoever made that game, I think they try to make it a little more competitive when somebody's behind and like, that's not how Scrabble works. That would be like giving someone a power up in chess. It's like, you don't, that's not how chess works either. Right. There's, there's only one way that game can be played. And I don't know. I mean, yes, you can play games, whatever way you want, but I'm talking about like the OG way of playing it. That's Scrabble is well, whatever I'm bitching about Scrabble. You guys don't care. <laughs> rsi l i n n y c feel better jerome thank you i don't know it's not it's when i talk like when i um I, I just because i i think the sinuses like i'm just like i don't know the the phlegm or whatever it's just i can't hear out of my ears so it's not like i'm sick i just can't when i talk i i don't know it's just annoying uh whatever <laughs> tectonic says don't worry be happy yes thank you tectonic <laughs> words of affirmation from tectonic <laughs> Okay, <laughs> moving on. Um, so I it's it's funny because uh, I'm actually going to coincide this with an article that Brian sent me. But I have this article from Android Police, which is uh, it's a very nice, uh, lighthearted article. T-Mobile Tuesdays are coming to Sprint next week. So anybody who uh, has Sprint, um, you can be part of T-Mobile Tuesdays. That's really nice. Get ready for all the free uh, BK and slightly discounted fuel you want. So uh, carriers use all sorts of promotions to entice subscribers their way. And for the past four years now, T-Mobile has been handing out weekly freebies as part of its T-Mobile Tuesdays program. I should really take uh, advantage of T-Mobile Tuesdays. I think I've used it once or twice. And I know that they have good deals on there and I never look at it. Uh, we've seen, e we've even seen other carriers try to spin up their own versions of the deal to mix success. But now that T-Mobile and Sprint are one, what does that spell for access to T-Mobile Tuesday's giveaways? After confirming plans to extend the offer to Sprint users earlier this year, 
T-Mobile is finally flipping the switch, welcoming Sprint subscribers who can grab their first deals next Tuesday. A couple months back, Sprint users noticed that they could successfully install the T-Mobile Tuesdays app, but were presented with a coming soon message. Earlier this week, we started to get the sense that soon could be right around the corner, as a new leak gave us hope that Sprint subscribers were finally about to get access, with T-Mobile employees receiving word about training with the specific mention of preparing to offer access to legacy Sprint customers. So yeah, uh, great news. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Well, it's already almost done here. Next week's deals include a stylish fanny pack for free, credit for your Starbucks rewards account, and of course, a couple cents off gas. Download the app now so you're ready for next Tuesday. So good news, everybody. If you are a Sprint customer, you can take advantage of uh, T-Mobile Tuesdays. Isn't that really nice? Isn't that nice of T-Mobile to give uh, that kind of stuff for Sprint? So with that being said, what I'd like to uh, segue into is uh, after the merger, T-Mobile is laying off hundreds of Sprint employees. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. That is not funny in terms of Sprint employees. I'm laughing at the fact that T-Mobile, you know, is giving free swag for Sprint customers. And it's like, oh, that's great um, consumer, you know, uh, PR and whatever for the customers. And uh, it's great for the consumers, but uh, at the same time, they're about to lay off hundreds of people. Uh, and uh, it looks like they're all Sprint employees. So yeah, um, maybe they could have kept some Sprint employees if they didn't give away so much stuff. I don't know. I, I, cause I, I don't know if everyone really cares about a fanny pack at this point, but Again, I you know the prices are different when it comes to all that, and I'm not, I don't know all again I all the the inner workings for for that stuff. But uh, in a conference call on Monday, lasting under six minutes, T-Mobile Vice President James Kirby told hundreds of Sprint employees that their services were no longer needed. He declined to answer his employees' questions, citing the personal nature of employee feedback, and ended the call. I didn't, I didn't knew, know that. That's pretty shitty. Uh, TechCrunch obtained leaked audio of that call, which was said to be one of several calls held by T-Mobile leadership throughout the day to lay off staff across the organization. The layoffs come just two months after its contested 26 billion Sprint merger was finally completed. On the call, Kirby said T-Mobile was eliminating Sprint's inside sales unit a sales division that focuses on small businesses across the U.S. The executive didn't say exactly how many staff were laid off. Almost 400 people were in the phone meeting. A person on the call told TechCrunch. Damn, that's, uh, oh, wow. That's crazy, especially having that many people on the call just to let know let you know that you were getting laid off. Kirby has heard saying that the division's layoffs would make way for 200 new positions and encouraged employees to apply for one of the new positions using T-Mobile's external careers page, spelling out the web address on the call twice. Some impacted employees may be able to shift to new roles, though the carriers don't appear to have done much to facilitate the moves beyond encouraging staff to apply. The employees who were laid off Monday will keep their jobs for another two months until August 13, said Kirby. A person of the call told TechCrunch that the severance package amounts to two weeks of pay for every year on the job, but some employees may get more. So, I mean, at least there's a severance package. Still sucks. But uh, yeah, two weeks, two weeks of pay for every year on the job. I mean, it's it's not the best, but it's still um, it's still not bad. I'm so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this because I think about my old job that I had and uh, at the old job I used to work at, and I worked for that. I worked in that company for 13 years before I quit. I, I voluntarily quit, so I never got any of these packages. But uh, at the company I worked at, they had buyouts, and what a buyout was was they were literally buying you out. Uh, the the com the one thing I liked about that company I worked for is they they tried really hard to keep their employees and they they like to hire from within and they were a very big company, um, but uh, sometimes when they knew instead of laying people off they would do buyouts and how that worked is for uh, every for every year you worked with the company they gave you one month of pay so had I just taken a buyout if I had waited long enough. I'm sure I would have gotten one. I mean, I did receive one, but I was, I don't know how many years I was on the, in the position that, and I wasn't looking for a new job then, but, uh, 
yeah, for 13, for 13, uh, years, if they had given me one, then I would have just had a severance package for a year and a month. It would have been 13 months of pay, which was nice. So anyway, again, it's still not the news that people want to hear, but, uh, at least it's just better than just saying you're gone. Here's nothing. Um, but yeah. So uh, employers are required to give two months notice in advance of mass layoffs under the Warren Act. T-Mobile leadership held several conference calls with employees to announce layoffs across various sprint divisions on Monday on both the business and consumer sides, according to the person on the call. The person said that they were unaware of any T-Mobile employees affected by the layoffs. They cut people from every division, uh, but BI BISO? Biso seems to have been hit the hardest. One employee described their frustration. I just feel the company needs to acknowledge the pain they are putting people through during a pandemic, severance package or not. And that's a fair point. It really is. When reached, a T-Mobile spokesperson did not comment uh, by our deadline. T-Mobile closed the Sprint merger on April 1st. The deal found the nation's third and fourth largest carriers merged in a manner they insisted would keep them more competitive with the number one and number two services, AT&T and Verizon, which have long dominated the category. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Um, it, at the end of the day, it's 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 not the best news, but this also... So I, I, I have a lot of thoughts about it, and you guys have heard me talk about this time and time again about big companies taking over, controlling the power, like eliminating or minimizing competition. And this, this out, this outcome, right. Having this merger, uh, creating more power, smaller competition is leading to these layoffs. And I, I, you know, I don't feel happy about it that, that it's, it's uh, I don't know. It, it, it also doesn't help that we're in a pandemic. So there could be a number of factors that uh, weigh in on this. I, you know, ever since this pandemic hit and since I left my job in California, I have been for the last two months or so, I've been applying to a ton of jobs, right? I keep applying for stuff, but, uh, and like, I, I'll get a lot of interviews, but sometimes they won't meet me where I want when it comes to pay or just a number of other things. Cause I'm also looking for something more creative on the creative end. So it really depends, but, uh, it's, it's hard to find any kind of jobs right now. And, uh, yeah, I just, it's not the best news. And I hate that this is the last article I have. It's not kind of, it's not really how I wanted to end the stream today. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll bring one or two more things up before I go. But, uh, but yeah, um, Team Variety is saying here, I couldn't imagine getting laid off in this economic situation at the moment. I agree. It's uh, it's tough for everybody. Uh, man, for me, that would be $20,000 plus if I was bought out. There you go. Uh, Grant says, not sure why these uh, TMO layoffs are surprising. This is typical in m and What's m and I'm sorry. Uh, and generally how corporate layoffs work. Yeah. I, and you know what? I, I'm sure when this merger was coming, they, they should have... I'm sure they would have known, but I think regardless of it happening, I think there are people who are not going to be happy with it. There are going to be people who are like, man, I thought of all the people that got laid off, it wasn't going to be me. Um, I, you know, I, I think, I think with that too, though, it's just the stress of it happening in the times that we're in right now. Uh, thankfully there's things for people for unemployment. If you can get through to unemployment, cause that's also hard right now, but there's that, uh, extra, um, that pandemic relief. So if you do get laid off, uh, you'll get your unemployment. Plus right now they're offering people $600 additional a week. Well, I think that's only until the end of July. And I don't think it's anything further after that. So I don't know, but, uh, but yeah, it is, that is how, how corporate layoffs work, especially when mergers happen, that kind of stuff is going to, you know, it's, it's bound to be, it's one of the things that they first do is they'll restructure. They'll look at where, um, the fat is where they don't need people. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so they're going to, it looks like they're going to open new jobs, but you're still going to have a couple, uh, you're going to have a percentage of people who are still going to be laid off. Um, tectonic is, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what, what this has to say here, but your, your next statement says, I'm pretty sure we all care about fanny packs. <laughs> It's it's coming back in style, Tectonic, don't you know? 
Um, Fear of the Rue 42, how's it going, man? How you doing? Question, Pixel 3, 4, or 3A? Camera is obviously a priority for my youngster. Trying to help lighten this, the stream for you. Thanks, Fear of the Rue 42. Um, if camera is the priority, so the Pixel 4 has probably a marginally better camera than the 3 or the 3A. Uh, I, I wouldn't really get the four if if camera is really the bigger thing uh the 3a isn't bad but i just don't know how like the 3a you could get for a really good price it just depends on how long you think you're going to be keeping that 3a for uh for your for your um kid uh if if you think it's going to be a year or two i think the 3a would still be a good deal if it's going to be longer than that i don't know if i would get the 3a if you if you think you're going to have that phone for more than like three years, maybe the three A isn't the best deal, but, um, no, I don't know. It wouldn't three A is a good price. I, and who told me, was it Leo Android stud? I think told me he was able to buy an open box of the three A for like 219 bucks or something, which is really, really cheap. Um, okay. Fear the rule 42 says I keep phones for about two years or so. I think the three A wouldn't be bad. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm like looking at the other chat here too. Yeah, uh, 3A wouldn't be bad at all. Um, I, I'm just trying to think of like, if what about your kid playing games and stuff though? I wonder how good the 3A would be under, what does the 3A use as a chipset? Is it the 675 guys? I've never had a 3A, so I don't know much about like build quality or anything else on that, but I'm sure it would still be decent. Um, 3A would probably have a better battery than the 4. I mean, 4 would give you the best gaming performance. Hmm. But it's also very expensive. I actually know I wouldn't buy the 4 right now at 800 bucks. It's way too much. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let us know what you end up getting. Uh, I think you get you could get really good deals on a 3A at the moment. Um, yeah, Tectonic was saying, I have the 3A XL, and I'm sure you'll find the battery life superior from any of those devices. Camera is basically the same on all three. No, and Tectonic makes a good point. Um, yeah, so uh, Grant says, I've been through several layoff rounds, so I get the feelings involved. These articles just seem to be singing, singling out TMO for clicks. Yeah, and that could be that too. I mean, you know how people are. They they got to get the stories out. They got to get stuff out there. So yeah, a lot of a lot of you guys are uh, pretty much uh, talking about the three A. So there you go. Uh, hey man, do you think we're gonna have the Snap Seven Seventy Five G in the Pixel Five? Ahmed, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, how's a Medin? Am I saying that right? How's a Medin, Ahmed? Uh, so <laughs> I said this. I think I I put a video out about it uh, the other day. I, I told people, don't hold your breath for the 775G. Is it possible? Sure. But I think anything's possible at this point. Um, but if you want my honest opinion, Ahmed, I wouldn't hold your breath. And for me, the way I feel about it is I would assume that the Pixel 5 will have the Snapdragon 765G. And I only say that because I hope I'm wrong. I'm hoping they'll put a 768G in there or I'm hoping they'll put a 775G in there so that if it does happen, then I will be more surprised and I won't be disappointed. Um, as, mu as much as I, as much as I want to see the 775G in there, I just don't think it's going to be happening. I think it'll be the 765G at this point. Um, Gandex says, uh, I don't have any accidental touch issues when my case is on. Yeah, that's, that's what, uh, um, Right, that's what Big House is saying that he doesn't have issues uh, when he uses that. So, uh, yeah, that's a that's great. I just I use cases or I don't use cases on my phone, so that might be more of an issue for me. But um, thank you for sharing that feedback. Uh, that's something that's something that a lot of people uh, have to keep in mind too. Is for people who who say accidental touches. If you're using a case, then you might not have that issue at all. Um, Hey, Jerome, are you streaming tonight with Mobile Geezer uh, and Will D? Actually, Big House, that's tomorrow, Friday Night Tech Talk. I I most likely will for tomorrow. Um, it really depends on my workload. I just, I really have a lot of, 
I have a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of stuff like coming down the pipelines, especially in July. So, uh, I more than likely you'll see me on there, even if it's just for a little bit, but I, I should be on there tomorrow, but yes, not tonight, big house, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, okay. So let me see here. Uh, big house is saying three, a Snapdragon six seventy. Um, yeah, I, I love that you guys are sharing your your experience with the 3A. That's good. Uh, I have the regular 3A, and it's been an awesome device so far. I have had it since February. Um, Tectonic says, I take many pictures, and my family is always impressed with them compared to their iPhone uh, Xs, 10s. Uh, yeah, Tectonic, mostly picture taking. There you go. Grant says, uh, Pixel 3 is $275 on Amazon Renewed. Um that's a pretty good deal too. What's the three A at? Is it at three? Anyway, yeah, that's like a good guys. Thank you so much for helping out. <laughs> I didn't have to do much work on this one. Uh, okay, so let's see. I think I think uh, that might be it, guys. Uh, I don't think we have much else going on for for today. We're about an hour and a half in, and uh, I probably need to give myself a breather so I can get like my ear not you know, being crazy right now. So, uh, before I go, uh, real quick for anyone who's in the stream, first of all, thank you for joining the stream. If you haven't had a chance, please, please, if you can like the stream, liking the stream helps in an algorithmic kind of way, AKA it helps people find the stream. Uh, hopefully it helps people get, uh, in the chat. If you can see here, people are very active in the chat and they're very friendly and they're very helpful. And, um, you know, we try to be very transparent about how we feel uh, without cutting each other's heads off because I think that's important. Um, I think we're a good community and I like that. I, I love that I can sit here and people ask a question and um, I don't always have, because again, and I tell this to everybody, I don't know everything about phones and some people have more experience with the phone than I do. So it's always nice to, sh to share uh, that kind of stuff. It's, it's good, I, I appreciate that. And uh, so also for anyone who's in here, I do stream weekdays. Uh, Mondays through Fridays at 2 p.m. Central. So if you have not had a chance, uh, please consider being a subscriber. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, which is, I don't know, I pretend I would point at where your subscribe button would be. Is it right there? <laughs> but uh, yeah, please uh, consider being a subscriber. I'd love to have uh, you part of uh, this whole family. Plus, at the same time, you'll know when I'm streaming uh, weekdays. So it's always nice to have or at least get notified. And lastly, if you are in the stream and you've noticed in chat, there are people with green in their name and they have a red Chicago star next to their name. That is because they are part of the phone Jerome fam. And you could be one too for as little as 99 cents a month. All you got to do is click on this join button. That's right here. This lovely blue join button again, for as little as 99 cents a month, you'll get green in your name. You'll get a red Chicago star next to your name and you'll get to use custom emoji. You'll also have your name in the intro and the outro of every single one of my live streams. And there are different tiers as well that you can use uh, that give you different perks that I need to be better about, but we'll get to that. Anyway, um, all you gotta do again is click on that blue join button. And if you can't find it, you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. Otherwise, uh, I think that's all I got for you guys. Again, I wanna thank everybody for coming by today, joining the stream, being part of, uh, you know, this little community that we have. It's always nice to just have the regulars come by, um, which is crazy to think that I have like regulars that come by. It's just nice to talk tech and have something to talk about. And um, hopefully it helps pass the time by and it's informative and entertaining, which is really my goal here. Otherwise, uh, I think that's it. I'm just like looking through chat real quick to see if anybody else has uh, uh, anything else going on. Um, <laughs> This may be the finest stream going right now for me. <laughs> Hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully that doesn't, <laughs> it's like, ah, yeah, this'll do, this'll do. Um, so let me see. Uh, okay, you guys are still talking. I'm, I'm glad you guys are. And uh, you guys can while I <laughs> roll the credits. So before I go again, thank you guys. I do want to thank everybody, all my patron members, all my YouTube members. Um, everybody who's liked and subscribed and commented and everybody who uh, went the extra distance and super chatted. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, again, you guys helping me in that way helps support what I do. It helps offset costs. And uh, I cannot be more thankful for the community that I do have. So come back uh, tomorrow, guys, 2 p.m. Central. Hopefully the sinus stuff will be better. 
I, I don't really know if it will, but hopefully it will be. We'll do it all again tomorrow, uh, TGIF tomorrow. So we'll make it a fun one. I'll try to make it a fun one. We'll have stuff to talk about and uh, we'll do it again. All right, guys. Uh, with that being said, I'm out of here. Here's me waving bye, hitting play, music playing. Bye. <laughs>